I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and today I thought I would give you an idea of what you can do with leftover jelly roll strips. So let's see what we can turn this into. For this quilt, I'm gonna be making 13 blocks, but you can adjust this to any size you want. So since I'm making 13 blocks, I've cut 13 six and a half inch squares, and you can use scrappy background or one background. Totally up to you. We're gonna use one jelly roll strip for every square. And I'm not gonna cut this down at all to begin with. What I'm gonna do is just put right sides together, my jelly roll strip and my background, and the edges are going to touch the edge of the background. I'm gonna use a scant quarter inch seam, which is slightly less than a quarter inch, and at the end, you'll see why. So on my sewing machine, I have a quarter inch foot right here. So I'm not gonna put the fabric all the way up to it. It's just gonna be slightly to the left. Now I've added it to one side. I'll just cut this, go to the other side, and add more. So this one is great because you don't really have to do any cutting until you're totally done. And again, the other side, scant quarter inch. If you put a ruler on it, you will see that I have a scant quarter inch seam. From here, I'm gonna set my seams by just putting the iron nice and flat on the seam that I just sewed. And then I'm gonna press toward my jelly roll strip. Now before I add the last two strips, I'm going to trim the edges off. The fabric I'm using today is strawberries and rhubarbs, and it's just left over from another project. So I'm gonna use up these strips. And now I'm going to do the same thing on one side, just add the strip, and I'm just layering the fabric just slightly past the seam so that I have a little bit of room to trim off. And I'm not pinning because I'm using a scant seam, and at the end, I'll show you how to trim down. Cut that off, and then add the last one. So from here, I'm just gonna set my seam and press to one side, and you can see we only have a tiny bit we're not using. You can actually cut two and a half inch squares from the leftover. You can probably only get one, but you could cut this two and a half inch square and just put it in your scrap bin. From here, you just plop your 10 and a half inch square ruler right on top. I'm using Creative Grids today. I don't even, you know, you could line this up if you want, but on this one, it's just scrappy, and I really don't do that, and I just cut all four sides. And since I used a scant quarter inch, I will have just a tiny bit coming off the edge, and my block will be perfectly 10 and a half inches unfinished, and we're ready to put our quilt together. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you making this whole quilt at my house. And what I do is I like to starch my jelly rolls. The jelly rolls will, will shrink across the length, but not the width. So you can starch any jelly roll you want um, for any of your projects. So I took some jelly rolls that were left over and I ended up with 15. So I end up using two extra blocks on the, on the back but I just drench my strips in starch on the front and the back, and then I lay them to air dry. And I um, usually do that at night and then come back and just um, sew with the fabric the next day. And um, pretty easy, pretty fast, and starching is really um, one of my favorite things to do. I learned it from Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings, and it really makes my quilting go much smoother because my fabrics are nice and stiff. So I think I've got 15 strips there and um, that is my background. So for my background, I ended up using one and three eighths yards for this quilt. And you can see that is about one and three eighths. So what I do is I just starch one side, flip it over, 
and starch the other side and I just make sure it's 100% soaked in all spaces. If you leave any space unstarched, you might get a little spot that shows. So I just try to go over every little area, make sure there's no holes missing, um, and then I'm gonna let that dry. But doing the background starching does take quite a bit of time and usually takes more than one can. So um, the starch I'm using is just an original hold um, by Faultless. Oh yeah, so there's my second can. I was gonna say I'm about, I probably knew I was about to run out of a starch there just from doing this so, for so long. So got all my background starched and then just let that dry. And I guess I am kind of right there. I'm gonna starch my binding also, but there I make sure that my background is kind of laying flat. Anything you lay that's like really bent or crooked is gonna leave a crease. And then there I am starching my binding and then now I'm gonna starch my backing so this is starching my backing and I bet I go to another can pretty soon so you'll see that I am doing all the pieces of the quilt at one time so everything I'm gonna need for the front the binding and the backing and I do that so that it's all dry at one time and when I have time to quilt I can just start and stop and do the entire quilt all at once and you can see how drenched the backing gets. And there's that little white fabric that I have underneath and that gets really crusty. And so I'll have to change that every couple of months, but I put that on top of my ironing board cover so my ironing board cover doesn't just get totally ruined. Um, and I just use, you know, just like a cheaper cotton for that. Yep, and see, I'm laying that to dry so that it doesn't um, get ruined. And then this is the next day. So this is me ironing the Jelly Roll strips nice and flat before I use them and put them in my block. And um, just kind of count them. And just, if you iron right on top of each other, it's just gonna get that heat going all the way through and just gets the bottom ones even flatter. And I do think if you try starching, you'll get a nice result. Now here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna iron the background and I'm putting two layers together, it looks like. And I do try to get as much creases as I can out before I start. And then I'm just keeping some notes on the side so that I can remember what I did later. And I also have a quilting journal on the side and I make notes in that. That's actually what I'm making notes in so that if I ever want to recreate this quilt later, I can remember what I did because it's almost impossible for me to remember what I did this morning or had for breakfast, much less that. So here I'm cutting and I'm going to cut 13 six and a half inch squares for the center of my block. And from that, what I do, you'll see I'm flipping fabric up and down. And I'm doing that because it's a background fabric and I wanna make sure when I get to the sewing um, machine that my fabrics are right side up. So just flip your fabrics all right side up. And actually I think I have, I think I have a total of 16 cut there. So at the beginning, I showed you how to make the block and this is just me at home doing the same exact thing, the same exact technique. The only difference is I am not using a rotating mat, and that is me putting water in my iron. I do use spring water. And one thing that I do recommend anytime you are sewing at home is do one block first, then do a second block. See how you like it. See if you need to adjust your seam in any way or your pressing in any way. Do a couple blocks, get used to it, and then get your technique down before you do all of your blocks. And you'll see that that is what I am about to do is do a couple of blocks, and then you'll, all, you'll see I start mass making the blocks. But I just do get my rhythm down on the first couple of blocks, and um, I do press them. And then after I press them, I did end up using clappers, which are wooden pieces right there. And I use those clappers just to keep my seams nice and flat, and I do that in between the blocks so that when I come back, they're nice and flat. 
So on this quilt, I ended up having um, a lot of background of one fabric. So I used that in the center of my block. But since we're using scraps of jelly rolls, you could just use scraps of different low volumes or different backgrounds that you have left over and make it even scrappier than I did. So here what I'm doing is I am pressing my seams flat and you see I'm pressing them and then throwing them on my table and I'm gonna come back and cut all of them at one time. And so I have got the rhythm down on my blocks and I'm basically mass producing at this point, meaning ironing all at once, cutting all at once. And then I'm gonna add those last strips all at once. And you can see I must have been to Starbucks that day because I am drinking my favorite iced tea. So I, um, do try to be very efficient, and I wish I could really cut and sew this fast, but I do try to be efficient with my time, and by doing all of the same step repetitively together will really help um, you with time. So here what I'm doing is I'm laying out the blocks on the floor, and you're gonna notice that I rotate my blocks so that my seams do not touch and I don't have to worry about the fact that my blocks are all pressed the same direction. And when I lay out my blocks, I do kind of move them around and look at color placement. And that's this part of my favorite part is when I finish and have all my blocks laid on the floor. And you can see I'm still using my clapper. Um, I'm using several of them at one time and kind of mass ironing, mass cutting all at one time, putting them under the clapper, and then I'll start laying them out on the floor. And I don't know if you can see, but my dog is kind of in the side. He's um, kind of on the side in his little bed. But that's me, I just kind of start in the center. I did want this one to have red in the center. And so that's kind of where I started, was red in the center, and then I just go outwards from there and decide what looks good. So, and this quilt probably took me maybe two hours to do, not, not too bad. And I did use a total of five different rulers in this video, which is very excessive, but um, that's kind of what I did. On this one, I'm using the um, 10 and a half inch Creative Grids ruler. And then I'm just making some notes um, so I can always go back to them. And I have that brown kind of on the side and that's because the red at the top has that same print and I wanted to pay attention to not having, there are some Hawaiian, Hawaiian floral prints in this leftover strip that are pretty strong and I wanted to keep those away from each other in the final quilt. And I ended up with two extra blocks so with that, I'm gonna end up putting some on the back also. So I kind of figure out when I'm laying this out, which ones don't look the best on the front and then I end up putting those on the back and it just gives me more color options. So I just kind of move everything and then you see how I'm rotating the blocks and you'll see that when you, you move them, you'll have one straight, straight line and then one side of the block with seams so you don't have to worry about them um, lining up or anything. And that's why I was able to press to one side because I don't have to worry about the points. Now when I'm at home, I don't really use a rotating mat because I'm pretty comfortable with where I'm at. Now at work, I end up using a rotating mat most of the time and it's just due to the height of the table and my comfortability, I guess at home, I'm just like really comfortable. So from here, what I'm going to do is cut two 16 and a half inch squares of my background, cut it on the diagonal twice, and those are your setting triangles that go on the outside. Then I'm going to cut two nine inch squares, cut on the diagonal once, And then I'm going to lay them out and piece everything into rows and press each row opposite directions. So once I have this all put together, you're gonna notice that your setting and corner squares are much wider than they need to be. So I'm taking a Creative Grist ruler, I have an overhang, 
and I'm just gonna trim three quarters of an inch away from that outside point to get it nice and square just like you see right here. And here's my beautiful scrappy quilt. I hope you love it as much as me. I'd love for you to subscribe to our channel for all of our free quilty content and I'll see you next time.